really mess with the technology and seek students' feedback, try to create a positive online uh, environment and don't hesitate to seek help. The campus has a lot of resources and people are so willing to help when you seek help. When I started, it was really helpful to work with some of the instructional designers on our team in the graduate school. That was absolutely invaluable. My advice to new online instructors is to embrace whatever training, coaching, or ongoing support is offered by their institution. And if it's not offered, to seek it out. And the training should happen well in advance of when your class is going to be taught so that you have time to learn, digest, and implement. And that training should also be continuous. Try to cover out the time, make best friends with your IT person so they can really um, help you. Uh, look at other sample courses. Have effective communication before, during, and after the class. Visually pleasing, engaging teaching materials. Um, select the best way to deliver the content based on the nature of the subject to be taught and have assignments that use creativity and collaboration so students can work as a group and also think outside the box. And as far as communications, it's not just the face-to-face -face and synchronous. It's emailing them for Blackboard and make it systematic let's say, reminding them about the upcoming assignment, informing them about what is expected for the next meeting face-to-face. -face. And it always helps to have a structure and keep it systematic, keep it consistent. I set up expectations very clearly uh, in the beginning um, of the class or the beginning of lecture. So I know, I tell them exactly, um, how I want questions to be asked, they can interrupt me, how often I'm gonna pause, that I plan to stay as long as they want when the course is in, so they can ask questions there. I give them all the tools, all the ways that I'm gonna be avail available to them. It is harder, but if you can make a, a connection with your students, just to get a sense of your personality, of who you are, like just to, send a class email or just give a session that gives students an opportunity to meet you virtual office hours. Provide as much as you can, which is reasonable within your schedule. Communicate with your students and allow them to communicate back with you. Keep that communication bi-directional. And I think that's the key to engaging them and making this virtual classroom feel like it's a community. I don't do this perfectly, but the students are much happier if I'm an active presence in the discussion room. So um, they really, instead of just talking to each other, they really like it when I'm an active participant. And then they ask, you know, students are saying X, students saying Y, and Christy is in there saying, no, it's actually Z. <laughs> and then so they really um, enjoy my contribution to the discussion with their classmates. What has been very helpful for me learning how to teach online is being part of the online teaching community here at UNB led by Dr. Michelle Pierce. Dr. Pierce is my to-go person when I have any questions regarding online teaching. I work with Michelle Pierce um, and then she kindly allowed me to see how her on class in um, online classroom structured, and then uh, the material she used, and then also her pacing, that, that's also very helpful. And just being able to exchange some best practices and brainstorm some scenarios with colleagues all over the UMB, all, all across our seven schools, I found that extremely helpful to have that community once a month. Look at someone else's course and see what they've done and see what you like and what you'd want to incorporate in your course. It's very important to understand how the technology works and what are different features so we can use them adequately. Um, not make assumption of what students already know about using online tools. So it's very important to provide tutorials to the class so everybody's on the same page and give your students very clear instructions, what is expected from them. We are not all at the same technology tolerance level. And so 
work within your means. Um, I think it's important not to get so mired in the technology that we lose sight of the pedagogy. If the yes, no button works in Zoom and that suffices for your purposes, don't use poll everywhere. A, a really organized structure, I think. Having multiple formats as well, um, or multiple teaching tools like readings that, that are tightly coupled with the lecture, which also then are tightly coupled with, with um, videos or TED Talks or other kinds of media um, and some kind of exercise. And you don't have to have one of those in every single session, but helping students understand sort of why the content is there, how it, how it fits together, I found to be um, useful. Um, I think interactive engagement, so again, that synchronous time, time, I think was really valuable and using that time, not just as like a lecture dump or showing any films or anything, but really basically saying, what did you learn from the content that was there? Let's break out so they can talk to each other. Definitely, they did not want to just sit there and listen to me for an hour. So what kind of interactive breakouts can you use? And just in general, reinforcing concepts in those multiple ways, because everyone might not do all the reading or might just learn differently. And so having the combination of um, strategies, I think, was helpful. Be patient and use the resources that our campus and your school have to offer. Not be afraid. It's a good place to start. Um, just you know, um, be passionate about what you're teaching, and then um, the students will pick that up. So, um, of course, it's more rewarding telling a joke to a whole room and people are laughing and falling out of their chairs. But even if you don't see students and you don't hear them, they know that by you telling that joke, you are trying to engage them. You want them to be invested and then you want them to enjoy the material and that you care about them. Get the training. Don't ignore those email messages. Like I have like when 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 your team, when your support team sends you the email that says, hey, we've got this upcoming training, don't ignore the message. Look at your calendar, look at your schedule, see where you can make it fit. Make that part of your course preparation. And don't underestimate, I think, also what students can learn online. We, we're a practice-based profession in our school. I think we've operated, a number of us have operated from the assumption that there's really no way it's gonna be as high quality online as in person. I think this semester, mostly with the synchronous content uh, there, we, I've been surprised at how, how much my students really learned certain kinds of concepts that I think they applied better than in the past. Put on the bathing suit and jump into the deep end. It's, uh, I, I, I don't think it's the kind of thing you can kind of like put your toe in and try to just do one. You got to just like immerse yourself in it and just go for it um, and find out that, you know, you, you will swim and you will survive and so will your students.